Stephen Tompkinson has been pictured arriving at Newcastle Crown Court today for the second day of his grievous bodily harm trial. The 56-year-old DCI Banks actor is accused of inflicting grievous bodily harm of a man named Carl Poole on May 30, 2021. Tompkinson denies the charge. Tompkinson was photographed wiping his eye as he arrived at court this morning. He sported a black pinstriped suit jacket and trousers, which he matched with a black shirt and burgundy tie and combed his silver locks away from his face. Ahead of the trial, during a hearing in September, Tompkinson entered a not guilty plea and his barrister Adam Birkby told the court the actor will claim self-defense. In yesterday's hearing, the court was told how the TV actor allegedly punched and slapped Mr. Poole, following a noise disturbance outside his home. The court heard how Tompkinson had been disturbed by Mr. Poole, who had just been swimming in the North Sea and was dressed in his underpants, and his friend Andrew Hall. Michael Bunch, prosecuting told the jury that Tompkinson had confronted the pair in the early hours of the morning of May 30, 2021, outside the property in Whitley Bay, North Tyneside. He said, two calls were made to the emergency services between half past five and six o'clock on the morning. The first was from this defendant to contact police about two drunken men outside his address. The second, made just a short time later, was made by a neighbor to report that one of those two men was lying unconscious in the street. He added, what happened between those two calls is the question that you have to decide. The prosecution says that this defendant, angry at the noise the two men were making, ended up punching one of them, knocking him to the floor so that he banged his head and sustained traumatic brain injuries. The defendant claims he did not more than push away the man in self-defense after the two had come towards him. Mr. Bunch told the court that Mr. Poole had gone to see Mr. Hall for a catch-up, arriving around midnight and the two had stayed up talking and drinking. They made a decision to head down to the beach, a mile or so away, to see the sunrise, he said. By this time, both men were drunk, and they took with them a bottle of Jägermeister. They continued to drink. Once there, Mr. Poole had a dip in the sea, whilst Mr. Hull simply paddled. Giving evidence yesterday, Mr. Poole said he had absolutely zero memory of that night, and that details in the statement he gave to police describing the incident was from what I've been told. Nicholas Lumley KC, defending Tompkinson, told him, I'm going to suggest you fell as a result of a simple push and since that event you have exaggerated what happened that day. The court heard how Caroline Davidson, who was a neighbor of Tompkinson's, awoke as she heard the two men in the street and looked out of her upstairs window to see Mr. Poole and friend Andrew Hollying on the path to the left of the defendant's home address. Mr. Poole only had on his underpants, with a towel lying on the path next to him while Mr. Hall wore a t-shirt and shorts. She went back to bed but heard Tompkinson and saw him standing on his driveway speaking to the two men. Mr. Bunch said of Mrs. Davidson, she could not hear him but Mrs. Davidson formed the view, from his hand gestures, that he was telling the two men to get on their way. It appeared that one of the men said something back and Mrs. Davidson saw her neighbor draw back his fist, before apparently thinking better of it and lowering his hand. The two men, who were obviously heavily drunk, tried to get to their feet, but Mr. Poole could hardly stay upright, and Mr. Hall had to help him keep his feet. The two made their way a short distance before stopping possibly because the defendant had said something further to them. By now, they were on the footpath at the end of the defendant's driveway, he remained in the middle of the drive. 
Mrs. Davidson watched as the defendant approached the two men, who were wobbling from side to side. The defendant first slapped Mr. Poole with his right hand before punching him to the head with his left fist. Mr. Poole stumbled and then fell backwards striking his head on the roadway, where he lay unconscious. Concerned for what she had seen, Mrs. Davidson asked her husband to call the ambulance service. Tompkinson had also called the police, apparently after first speaking to the two men, reporting he had taken a bottle from them and that he wanted them moving on. Mr. Bunch added, after Mr. Poole had gone to the floor, the defendant used his mobile phone to record two separate clips of the two men. He did not, however, contact the ambulance service himself 